One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. I love a live audience. I know it's kind of weird to say that here, especially because like this audience, me talking to you today, like we're not live. This is pre-recorded. I'm going to record this and then I'm going to upload it. And then you're going to listen to it maybe right after it's released, or it could be six months from now. But I love getting in front of a live audience in different kinds of capacities, whether it's doing a live stream, it is um, getting in front of an actual in-person audience at a conference or an event, and it just gives me a different kind of energy that I encourage everybody to do, at least at some point in your journey. Maybe you're like, whoa, 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 I'm not ready for that. I'm just barely getting by with the pre-recorded behind the scenes, like no one else is looking at me kind of thing. And that's okay. That's okay. I did not start off doing a lot of stuff in front of live audiences. I'm just saying I love it so much and I miss it. And I did a live training this past week, which is what I'm gonna share with you today. So I did a live stream uh, on my YouTube channel in the Facebook group, and I really just showed up to chat about content strategy and what I think is happening in 2023. And I got to answer some questions live, which is super, super fun. And I wanted to share that with you today because I think that it's always really cool. I mean, honestly, it it makes me stay on my toes, if I'm being really honest. I like the challenge of not knowing the question that someone's going to ask or the topic that they're going to bring up or even how I'm going to respond to it because there were questions that were asked on this live stream that if you would ask me six or 12 months ago, I may have answered it differently. So I like the ability to react in real time and answer people's questions right then and there. So enjoy my live stream all about content and content strategy. Let's get right to it. 
Welcome to The Profit Podcast, where we teach you how to start, launch, and market your content with confidence. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of content creation, this is the show that will help be your time-saving shortcut. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay, y'all can hear me. Y'all can hear me. We're good to go. Hi, everyone. Oh my gosh, what a cluster of... (laughs) Okay, so I have to tell you, right from the get-go, I haven't been doing live streams in a while. And I mean, it shows, right? Like I used to do a live show every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central. I would always do this and you can tell I'm out of practice. Holy moly. Like I'm having technical issues. I'm using my webcam. My big, nice, like beautiful camera is not working. Awesome to find that out. Like two minutes before I'm going live. I haven't done a mic check, like all the, all these things, but you know what? It doesn't even matter. We're here now. Yes. Anthony is like, thank you. I can hear you now. Uh, I'm glad you got your technical difficulties fixed. I'm so happy that y'all are here. Um, Let me know in the chat where you are watching from. So if you are brand new to me, hello, my name is Crystal Profit, and I teach creators how to get their content out there with confidence. So whether you are a podcaster, YouTuber, blogger, like wherever you fall on the spectrum of being a creator, or even if you're just here to check out the space and see what's going on. Um, I'm so happy that you're here. If you're watching on the replay, even better. I'm so excited that you are just here with us today or in the future, whenever you're watching this. So Anthony is in Toronto, Canada. So happy that you're here, Anthony. Um, But yeah, I wanted to have a chat today. This is my first live of 2023, like, which is wild because here we are in the middle of February. But what I wanted to talk about today is content strategy, where it's going in the future, and just any questions that you have about content creation. So if at any time, if you are brand new and you've never been to one of my live streams before, I actually am looking at, I'm like, Where's my questions? Where's my questions banner? So if you have any questions, type a Q in front of it. That way I don't miss them and I'm I'm sure to star them and I'll go back to them and answer any questions that you have. But let's go back to talking about content creation because as you all know, creating content, whether it's a podcast, it's YouTube, it's blog posts, it's kind of the thing, right? It's kind of a big deal. And if you have an online business or you're aspiring to have an online business, you're going to have to put some sort of content out into the world. And like I said, it could be those three podcasts, YouTube blog, or it could look like social posts, email newsletters. It could look like other types of content you're going to publish on your website. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to having consistent messaging, going out to the people that you want to serve. And the term serve is kind of loose, right? It could be serving them by adding free value. It could be customers that you're serving, people that you want to buy your service, buy your product. But you need to have this avenue for you to be able to serve people. So, um, so yeah. So yeah, been a while since we saw you last. I know Anthony, it has been a second. It has been, like I said, oh my gosh, y'all. And I don't even know what my hair is doing. I had my hair in a bun until about 20 minutes ago. Then I was like, I should probably put myself together. And, um, then we have all the technical difficulties. So it doesn't even, doesn't even matter. We almost didn't even make it here, but (laughs) here we are. But, um, I want to go back to, um, actually this week's podcast episode. So if you are not a current listener, let me see. I have the profit podcast. You can go check it out right here. This is my weekly show. And this week we actually talked about 
what it looks like to go on a content marketing journey. So if content marketing is brand new to you, you're not familiar with it, then I highly encourage you go check out the Profit Podcast. Um, Go check out my YouTube channel. If you're watching me on YouTube, then make sure you're subscribed there so you don't miss future videos that we put out. But at the end of the day, the content marketing journey is something that can look very different from creator to creator, whether it's a different type of content that you're putting out into the world, or it's a different audience that you're serving or how often you're serving them. There's just a lot of nuances that go into content strategy, content creation. And so if you have any questions about that, make sure you put them in the comments below. But I think one of the big things that we should cover here today is your audience. It's your audience, y'all. And that's why I'm so excited to be here today because you and watching this, whether it's live or on the replay, you are part of my audience. And I'm so grateful that you're here because I love engaging with you, interacting with you, answering your questions, whether it's here on a live stream, it's in a DM on Instagram, it's in an email, it's in our Facebook group. I really enjoy the interactions that I have with people in this community because it makes it go from this really big idea that can feel overwhelming and daunting to serve a very large audience down to this one person, this individual person that you're helping. And it makes it more of a personal connection, but it also like validates your ideas. Like there's nothing better than putting a podcast episode out there and then getting a message from someone in your audience saying, this is exactly what I needed to hear today. Or this is my biggest takeaway from your recent episode. Or this was the thing that helped me take that next step or you know, make a big decision or just re-motivate me, re-energize me to create content. Like those, I mean, I live for those moments. They're so special. And um, I was actually just talking to someone yesterday that um, it's an interview that's going to be coming out in March. Uh, It's with someone that I met over a year ago. And, you know, he said that he wanted to create a podcast and we were talking about it when we first met in person. And then he asked me the question. It was kind of like a reverse interview. Like he was on my show, but then he was asking me questions. It was really cool. It was a coaching call. And he ended up saying like, well, why do you do this? Like, why do you keep showing up? Or how do you keep showing up? Where do you find that motivation? And for me, it's my audience. It's having those interactions. Because I got to tell you, there have been some ups and downs in my journey. There have absolutely been some peaks and some valleys. And the thing that I come back to is serving my audience because it's not about me. It's not about me as a creator putting something out there or talking just to talk. It's about sharing a part of my story that I hope will connect with someone else in this audience and or even something that somebody from this audience shares with someone else. It's that glimmer of hope that what I'm creating will impact another person. And it doesn't have to be on the scale of thousands of listeners and millions of downloads and hundreds of thousands of YouTube subscribers. It could just be that one person that you're trying to connect with. And once you see that connection happen, or once you make that actual connection, then it just, it makes it all worth it. Um, I've been lucky enough to go to some podcast conferences and some different events where I've been able to meet some of you in person in that. Oh my gosh. You want to talk about icing on the cake. Like the best thing ever is being able to meet your audience in person, have them say, uh, one of my favorite, I was at a conference and this was in my early days. So this was 2019. I went to a conference. I'd only been podcasting for about a year and a half and someone screamed, screamed down the hallway. There's six, 700 people at this conference And I'm talking to uh, one of my really good friends. We're sitting there having a conversation. I'm loud as usual because this is just my MO and I'm loud. And then somebody like is screaming down the hall, Crystal, that's you. And I was thinking, 
what did I do? Like, did I walk off without paying for something? <laughs> like, what, why am I getting called out? What's happening here? And they said, I recognize your voice. I didn't even have to see you. I know your voice. And I knew that was you. And I just wanted to come up and say, I really enjoy your podcast. And so it's those moments right there that are just so significant in a creator's life. So whether you're creating podcast episodes, YouTube videos, blogs, like it's just such a special connection whenever you can really see the impact that you're having on your audience in real life or in real time and get that feedback. And so I hope that if you're brand new to content creation and you're feeling that overwhelm, you're like, I don't know what to do next, or I've been thinking about starting, but I just haven't. Just know that at the end of the day, that is one of the biggest driving forces for me five years into my content creation journey that keeps me going is my audience. It's having these interactions with you. It's engaging with you and just having those moments of validation, having those moments of clarity whenever someone says, this really helped me and your content is making a difference. It's just, it's everything. So Anthony has a question. Anthony says, is social media still the best way to get subscribers? Okay, this is a really good question. Anthony, um, if you're still here, I would love to know if when you say subscribers, you mean your podcast? Do you mean a YouTube channel? Do you mean email subscribers? Let me know um, because the more specific we can get with it, I think that the better off I can serve you and anybody else that's uh, watching or listening to this. But I'll go ahead and start with the most generic version, right? The quote unquote subscriber that we're trying to get. So for social media, it is a great place to have organic reach, meaning you are spending your time to get in front of an audience that otherwise you probably couldn't pick up the phone and you know have this direct connection with them. So having a broader appeal um, on social channels is absolutely a great way to get your content out there. Now, the next question I'm sure that you have and most people have is, if so, if social media is so great, which one is the best? which one should I be on? And this is a concept that's been around for a while and I still stick by it. It's where is your audience? Because wherever your audience is hanging out is where you should be. And um, I say that with a caveat because I have people tell me like, they like their audience is on Twitter. And I'm like, that's fantastic. I don't like Twitter. I've never liked Twitter. It's not, it's not something that I do. Like I, I don't even have Twitter installed on my phone. I don't have it. It's never been a platform that I really like. Same with TikTok. Like I've tried to get into TikTok, like posting and watching it. Like I just, I don't know. There's something about it that I just, I don't really like it. And so I don't really post stuff on there. I have a TikTok account. It's there, but I don't post on it regularly, even though everyone, all the experts, social media experts will tell you if you're not on TikTok, like you're dead in the water. What are you doing? You should be on TikTok. And I just have the belief that, you know what? I really enjoy Instagram. I really, really enjoy the platform. My audience is there. That's where I'm going to show up. I also have a Facebook group. Now, things have changed and shifted over the years where I think that in the past, you could post regularly on your Facebook page and get a lot of reach. You could post in a Facebook group and you know people would have this experience. You could go live on a Facebook page and get a ton of reach. But in reality, in 2023, that's not as much of the case as it used to be. So uh, social media is a great place, but I think that if you're looking to grow, so, okay, Anthony answered. So he is looking to grow his podcast subscribers specifically. I think that the best way to look at it, Anthony, is to see how you can get in front of other podcast listeners. So instead of converting social media people, right? People that like an audience that's on social media, even if you had a hundred thousand people 
you don't know how many of those people are listening to podcasts. Now, granted, that number, the statistic of how many, let's, you know, like I'm in the US, so let's just say American numbers, how many people are skewing towards listening to podcasts, that is significantly jumped up. It is so much higher than whenever, like I still had to explain to people what a podcast was whenever I was first getting started. I remember having to grab my neighbor. She was, you know, she lived right down the road and she's like, well, what are you up to? I'm like, well, I started this podcast. What is a podcast? She was a nurse practitioner. So she was like, I don't, I don't have time for that. I don't know what that is. I literally had to grab her phone, subscribe her to my podcast. And she still probably never listened to it. And I don't know if she listens to podcasts today, but that's how it was whenever I first got started. Whereas now Most people know what a podcast are and more people listen. So let's go back to the scenario of having the social media audience. You don't know how many of those people are going to listen to a podcast. But in contrast with a podcast... Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. If you're guesting on someone else's show, if you're running ads on another podcast, you already have a captive podcast listening member, a podcast listening audience right there. And so that is where it's worth investing your time, your energy, your dollars, your effort, excuse me, into those areas of growing your podcast because you don't have to convince them that podcasts are amazing, right? You know your podcast is awesome. We know podcasting is amazing and you don't have to convince them either. They're already bought and sold on listening to podcasts. You just have to make the convincing argument for them to listen to your podcast, So Anthony, since you're here, um, and if anybody else has any other questions, put them in the chat, but Anthony, we're turning this into a coaching session now. Now I have so many more questions for you. I want to know who is your audience? Like what is the topic of your podcast today? We'll give you a shout out here and, you know, maybe that's a way for you to get some more subscribers, but I want to know what your podcast topic is, and then we can throw around some more ideas. But, um, while you're filling that out in the chat, I really think it's important for anybody that's listening, that you have this idea of constantly testing and tweaking the ways that you approach growing your audience. This is what I've done for several years. I mean, I've done paid ads. I've done guesting on podcasts. I've been in other people's programs as a guest speaker, a guest teacher. I've done um, different types of bundling, like whenever... Um, People will have these product bundles. I've done that to get in front of an audience. And then what I'll do is I give away a free lead magnet or a free resource as part of the bundle. Well, those people get into my funnel. So they get on my email list. And from my email list, I have a welcome sequence. So I have an email, right? If you don't know what an email list, like, like let's break this down if you have questions about this. But what will happen is, They would receive the free product or service or whatever I was providing. And then from there, I would have an email within a series of emails that's called my welcome sequence. And one of them would say, have you listened to the profit podcast? Like come hang out with us. This is what we cover. This is what we talk about. And I would include all this information on how they can learn more about me. Another thing, Anthony, is um, if you have a website make sure your podcast is front and center, right? Maybe it's not the thing that they land on when they go to your homepage, or maybe it is. Maybe that's what the whole purpose of your website is, is to get people to subscribe. So there's a lot of different ways that you could go about it, but um, don't shy away from the thought of always experimenting and trying new things because 
trends change, people change, listeners change, and you always kind of have to watch what other people are doing. This is what I'm a big fan of too, is what are my industry peers doing? What are other podcasters doing to grow their shows? And just keep paying attention to those trends over time. Hey, Monique, so happy to see you here. So Monique is someone, I've missed you so much, Monique. Monique and I used to hang out all the time. Every Tuesday, we would, she'd be on my live streams and we'd be chatting. Sometimes it was just the two of us because I was like, okay, well, it's just me and Monique today. So I'm going to give Monique some one-on-one -on -one coaching because she showed up live. So it's so good to see you. I'm so, so happy that you are here today. Okay, so Anthony says... Because of you, I got up the nerve to launch my own podcast. This is fantastic. So Anthony, tell us the name of your show so we can give you a shout out. And like I said, maybe you'll get some subscribers just by talking about it here. Mm. So it's about music trivia. So I don't know this category really well. So I don't know if there's other shows that you could um, be a guest on where you could go promote your podcast or what you're doing. But something that I think a lot of people get like tripped up on when they start thinking about guesting on shows, you're not necessarily trying to get on quote unquote, the competitions podcast. This is what a lot of people have said, like, well, you know, that shows my competition or that's the one like I'm competing with them. Like we're in the charts neck and neck and I want to beat them. I mean, you can try to get on those shows, but at the end of the day, you're thinking about the podcast, the shows, or even the organizations or the services that serve your ideal listener. That's what you're trying to do. You're not trying to go after a specific, like, I would love to be on this podcast because it's huge and it would give me huge exposure. I have several friends that run podcast guesting agencies, and they've told me time and time again, that we've gotten our clients on these really big shows and they've gotten nothing out of it. Like the return on investment of the time, energy, money spent, like whatever they had to invest to get on that podcast is peanuts compared to whenever they got on a smaller show that had a deeper connection with the host. Maybe it didn't have as big of a reach, but they got more people to subscribe to their show. They got more opt-ins on their email lead magnet. They got, you know, more sales from it. So don't think that you can only go after these mega shows with thousands of listeners and millions of downloads. I really want you to focus in on the ones that have an audience of people that you want to speak to, the ones that you are that you you want to reach. You're like, I would love to get in front of this type of person. I would love it if my listeners had X, Y, and Z qualities. And then like, I want to bring them into my world, into my podcast and what I'm doing. Oh, I'll miss you too, Monique. That's so sweet. I love that you said that. Okay. 3345 inside the music. Okay. Is this the name of your podcast? I have to know now. I have to know. Is that the name of your show? Anthony, I need to know this. So I'm actually going to look it up. I want to know your podcast. Is that the name of your show? Or are you telling me, are these your demographics? Tell me in the chat because I'm so, so curious. So 33 to 45, is that your demographic? That's that's what I'm thinking that means right there is um, 33 to 45. I'm thinking of that as an age range. So let me know in the chat. I'll be checking out the comments. But if anybody has any questions, Monique has, uh, I always give her a shout out whenever I see her here, because like I said, she's been, she's been around here for a while and it's so fun to see her. So she has the demo with Mo that's D E M O demo with Mo podcast. And she talks about relationships. It's so cool. It's dating, whether you're dating, engaged, married, or I think the O is objectives, right? Oh, keep me honest here. I think that's what the O stands for, but you should absolutely go check out her podcast because she's, it's so fun. I wish I need to know the um, exact podcast episode that Mo was on, but she was on the profit podcast. So yeah, right here, she was on the Profit Podcast. We had a coaching call and it was 
so much fun. And it was so great to chat with her in person because again, well, in person, I say in person, it was over Zoom, you know, it was over a chat, but uh, it was so nice to see her face because typically whenever we interact, it's me on camera <laughs> and she's like, she's typing away in our Facebook group and, uh, and talking about, you know, all the things. Okay. 43 or sorry, 45, 33 inside the music. Okay. 45, 33. Oh, I found it. Okay. Oh, this is super fun. Anthony, I know you didn't sign up for this, but I am going to do a little bit of a demonstration on your show. Okay. I hope you're good with this because we're here now. <laughs> we are here now and uh, we're just going to do this because I have some ideas and thoughts on what we can do here. So let me share my screen and here we go. Okay. Y'all let me know. And if you're listening on the podcast, I'm just going to kind of walk through this and uh, talk through it in a non-visual way as best as I can. But what I do here, and I can actually um, tell everybody that this is one of my favorite things to do. So I do content audits regularly for students of mine, clients that I've worked with. And one of the things that I do is I will go to chartable.com. There we go. I'm trying to drop this banner. So I'll go to chartable.com and I will look up the person's podcast. I'll look up their artwork. I'll look up um, different things about their show because it's easier for me to do it this way as opposed to trying to find it on a different podcast uh, player like Apple or Spotify or any of those. It's kind of like a um, platform agnostic because it has a lot of the, um, all the information is put into one place. So I hope that, um, you know, everybody can see this, but I think that it's super fun, especially if you have a podcast, go look up Chartable Okay, I'm going to try to spell it. So the word chart and then A-B-L-E, chartable. All right. So Anthony, so fun. So inside the music is about what else? Music. Oh, got a little, got a little sass in here. I like it. So hosted by Anthony, a self-proclaimed music file. Join him as he shares his love of music and trivia stories and memories of great music on 33s and 45s vinyl. Okay. I have to tell you, I don't know anything about vinyl. <laughs> so uh, I'm just, just bear with me, Anthony, if I totally butcher this, because I don't know anything about vinyl records or anything. I remember my dad having the Beach Boys albums um, when I was a kid and I used to like do stuff on his vinyl records, but I haven't hit like the, what is it? Like the indie uh, retro movement of like everybody having vinyl records. Now I, I don't have it. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I can't, I can't add anything about you. You are a hundred percent the expert here, but what's cool is if you go to chartable, then you can kind of look at all of your episodes and what it looks like. And you can go through and just double check. Well, how do my episodes look like? What is it? Um, look like for someone else. And if you have, um, reviews for your podcast, they'll actually show up here as well. Even if they're pulled in from the other players like Apple or Spotify. Um, actually, I don't know that you can see Spotify reviews here, but you'll be able to see, um, Apple, but yeah, this is really cool. Plus I can see here, like you have your Buzzsprout link, so I can open this and we can see what, your Buzzsprout website looks like. I don't know if you knew that you had this, Anthony. Some people will tell me, oh, I didn't even know I had a Buzzsprout website, but this is what your Buzzsprout website looks like. And if you want to know more about um, how to utilize this on a regular basic basis, then I recommend, um, like if you don't have a regular website, then there's a YouTube video that I have that is dedicated to how to take a URL. So let's call it, you know, into the music would be a URL. If you wanted to buy that, I don't know if it's available, but if you wanted to buy that one, then you could buy or 45 to, thir to 33, right? That's very specific numbers. If you wanted to buy that Google domain or whatever domain, 
then you could buy that URL and then point it to this Buzzsprout website. So if anybody types in, um, I actually have this for my daily show, The Potty Report. So you can see how the URL up here is actually thepottyreport.com and yours is Buzzsprout. You can have it set up on the back end uh, of your Buzzsprout account and it will point to um, your website here. So I know we're getting, we're kind of going all over the place, but this is what I do whenever I do like a good audit is just let you know some of the possibilities because that's a really small investment that you could do to um, have a website that's up and running and functional and it's easy for you to say. So if you were to meet somebody and they're like, hey, what do you do? Or you know, what is what is your hobby? I don't know if this is a hobby podcast. You can say, okay, well, you know, I have my podcast. It's called 45 to 33. It's all about music. And if you go to intothemusic.com, you can listen to it and subscribe. And it would send them to this page here for Buzzsprout. Unless, like I said, you have a, another website that you want to send people to. But this is an easy way. Like I want to, um, I want to go back full screen real fast because I think that whenever we think about listeners and subscribers, we often get a little bogged down in the details or the complexities of, well, marketing is hard and I don't know, you know, how to do this and how to do that. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's just a matter of being able to simply tell people how to get to your show. And so if you find yourself trying to tell someone about your podcast or about your YouTube channel or about your blog and things get really complex in the mix, no one's going to check it out. No one's going to check it out. So having a very clear go to this URL or here's the simple name of my episodes or my podcast or YouTube channel, having things that are very clear can help you so much in your marketing. There's a book. I actually have it right up here. Do I have it? Yes, I do. Hang on one second. I love having my books like right here. Okay, this is an oldie but goodie. So for anybody that is looking to build an audience, really ramp up their content. So this is a book. Let me see when I got this. This one came out probably... It's, it's, it's funny because it's old in terms of like, quote unquote, the digital space. It came out in 2017. Y'all, the stuff that is in this book is still just as good six years later. And I know it feels like, oh my gosh, six years ago, that is like ancient in the digital world. Like we don't even have the same platforms. Like they wouldn't even talk about Clubhouse or TikTok or anything in this book. But the things that they have in here the really important piece that I want you to take away. So for anybody listening, you're like, Crystal, say the name of the book. It's Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. And one of the big points that he has in here is if you confuse, you lose. And I'm going to say it again. If you confuse, you lose. And it's not just about the process of listening to your podcast or getting people to your content, it's, does it make sense whenever you're telling someone about your show, whenever you're inviting them to listen to your podcast, whenever you're trying to just make conversation about your show, if you find yourself tripping up, trying to explain it or trying to articulate what it is or what you want it to be, you've already lost somebody. This is a lesson I keep having to learn over and over again. So I don't say this to, you know, pick on anybody or to throw something out there as something that, oh, I have never done that. I continue to do this to this day. I will still have stuff that I'll throw an idea to my husband. For example, I'll say, you know what? I'm thinking about doing this. And then he's like, I don't understand. Like I legitimately don't understand what you're talking about. And so if I can't even explain it to him and have him understand what my goal is or what the thing is that I can, I want to do, 
how am I going to explain it to someone else? How, so I just go back to the drawing board. I go back to, okay, if I'm confusing myself, a hundred percent, a thousand percent that my audience is going to be confused. And so I want you to take that message and really thread it through everything, everything that you do, whether it's your title of your podcast, it's the title of your episode descriptions, your episode titles, or it's the thing that you're putting on, um, on your YouTube channel, like the background banner, if you have something up there and you're like, Oh, that's an inside joke, you know, like if only people would get it. Well, if it's confusing, like if, for example, I talked about real estate and I had a picture of the Easter bunny up there and somebody was like, Oh, you just, you got to get it. Like it's an inside joke. I would be like, I'm, I'm probably not going to listen to this. Cause that's kind of weird. Like, why is there a picture of the Easter bunny up there on this real estate site? Right? Like, so you have to toe the line of what's confusing, what's very clear and run it through that test every single time. I literally ask myself every single time I create anything is, is this clear? Or is this confusing? And I'm hoping that 99.9% of the time it's going to be clear. But if not, go back to the drawing board. I mean, I hope that anybody listening or watching this is understanding that being a creator is an evolution. It's an evolution for so many reasons. One, you will get better over time. Like Anthony, I'm celebrating you that, you know, you got your podcast out there. You launched it. It is out into the world. And Monique, if you're still here, I would love your thoughts because you've been podcasting now for a while. Like you were just getting your podcast up and running whenever we first met. Now I would love for you to chime in and share if you have any evolutionary like insights to you getting better over time? Is there any aha moments or any, you know, big things that you probably would have never accomplished had you not started whenever you did, but everything is a constant evolution. I, I mean, I surprised myself in, I was looking at my numbers the other day for how many episodes I've created. I'm speaking on stage in March and um, I'm really excited about it. I'm going to Vegas. It's going to be so much fun. I'm going to be at Podcast Movement. So anybody that's going to be in Podcast Movement, like I, I hope that you come say hi to me. Come come like join me for my talk and come hang out with me. It's going to be so much fun. But I was looking at how many podcast episodes have I published to date? I've created and published over 1,100 podcast episodes between the Profit Podcast and the Potty Report, 1,100 episodes. The lessons that I have learned since June 2018, which is whenever I first launched my very first podcast to today, have been a constant evolution. And the theme between all of that is Am I confusing? Am I losing people? Am I confusing people? Am I losing people? And sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss, but it's that through line to anyone that wants to be a better marketer. And that's essentially every single one of us, every single one of us. If you're creating something in the digital space, then you are a marketer because you're going to have to be able to tell people about it. You're going to have to share what you're creating, whether it's in your own little bubble or it's on social media, it's on your email list, it's on, you know, however you're marketing your content, you're going to have to have that piece where you start to feel comfortable talking about what it is that you're creating. Yeah. Okay. So Anthony says, totally agree with you. Look into a website. Yes. I think that a website is one of those big blocks. And I get it. I totally understand. Like, I mean, this is something, um, my mom who's had a podcast and a YouTube channel for a while, she's gone back and forth on keeping it simple, but wanting to do it herself and trying not to overthink it. And, you know, I have, um, let me see, she had a WordPress website. Now she's looking into a Squarespace. And I told her, I was like, most people have this block on a website. And I think that if you can start with the smallest viable product possible, 
then you have nowhere to go but up from there. And for most people, especially if you're watching this, you're listening to this, and you have a Buzzsprout account, it's why I love Buzzsprout so, so much, they give you a website. Like it's part of your plan. And they make it easy for you to go out, purchase a domain, and point it to your Buzzsprout website, and boom, you have your very first podcast website. It's as simple as that. I know somebody's listening to this and you're like, Crystal, you understand all that. Like that's really not simple, but it is. And there's enough tutorials and blog posts. And like, I even have a few YouTube videos you can go check out and watch that show you how to get it done very easily step-by-step. But the thing is, is that you got to just start doing it and put it out there. That way you have a very clear place to send people So to go back to your original question, Anthony, about growing your subscribers and having more people listen to your show, make sure that it's very clear where they can find it, how they can listen to it. And um, again, what I love about this, I'm going to share my screen again, is having the ability for someone that goes to your Buzzsprout website, there's all the players right here that they could listen and subscribe to your show. So it's kind of the best of all worlds because you're getting them exposed to your content and you're also telling them, hey, you know what? Just go to my website, into the music.com. I don't know if that's available. That's a really easy URL to, to, <laughs> to list, Anthony. Maybe that would be good for you. But uh, into the music.com. And then uh, you can subscribe to what your favorite podcast player there. It's very simple, very easy, and it's very straightforward what you want them to do and what they're going to see whenever they get there. So I hope that that helps. But Anthony, let me know if you have any other questions. Okay, so good. I love Monique like wrote a huge paragraph about her experience with podcasting. This is so awesome. She says, it's been a year and a half now. I've definitely grown. Listening to episode one and listening to current episodes are such a huge difference. I would encourage anyone listening or watching live to just get out there and do it. Stay consistent, believe in what you're doing. And as as Crystal said, keep it simple in a way you can clearly explain what you're doing. This was so awesome. Thank you so much, Monique, for sharing your experience. Because I think at the end of the day, people look at others that have been doing this for a long time, right? Like I'm sure, Monique, you probably had a few experiences where you know someone that you're close to that's in your community, in your circle of friends that are like, how are you doing this? You're a year and a half into it. How are you? Like they're seeing you with the traction or the consistency of doing it for a year and a half. Well, now they're interested. They're like, well, how did you get here? But you are thinking back to that very first episode and you're like, oh, if you just knew. If you just knew how much anxiety I had recording my first episode or how nervous I was to interview my first guest and like you have all this like emotional baggage. (laughs) I tell people, I'm like, I'm a content therapist is what I really am. Like I, I need to create a certificate for myself and put it in the background because at the end of the day, that's what I feel like is so much of it is just pushing publish getting that very first piece of content out there into the world because you can't get started if you don't first get started, start making some of those mistakes, start going through some of those challenges that you won't even know that are there until you hit them. I have so many students and members of this community that have told me I started your, like, I have a podcasting course. It's called Profit Podcasting. Um, I'll link to it here in a second where you can find it. If you have always wanted to start a podcast, you don't know where to get started. But I have people that come into my program and then they say, okay, I got started. I got like five episodes in. And then I scrapped the whole thing. (laughs) And And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean you scrapped? Like you just didn't publish it. You unpublished it. You deleted it. Like what happened? They're like, well, no, I didn't really scrap the whole thing. What I did is I rebranded. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with rebranding. I've rebranded. I don't even know how many times at this point, whether it was a big rebrand or a small rebrand. But I know that one thing is for sure that you have to just keep looking at everything as 
how am I going to get better? And one of the things that they saw is I can't get better if I'm talking to the wrong audience or I can't get better if it's not clear like the title of my podcast, or I started and I started getting feedback from my audience and they told me like, that's great that you're talking to, you know, all these moms, but I'm not a mom and I love what you're talking about, but you're not really feeling my need of needing to hear this type of content. So by just hitting publish and getting it out there, you're able to start getting that feedback that will make you better. It will make you a better creator. It will make you a better podcaster and it will help you really start to see the value that you can add to others. So I want to share this real fast. I'm going to put it in the chat. I'm going to put it in the comments. So I don't know if I can put it in all the comments, but I am going to put it up here on the page. So if anybody is curious about where it is, Where is it? Here we go. Profit podcasting is my course. Um, It's actually, I wasn't even planning on talking about it today, but if you wanted to start a podcast, then there you go. Here's the page that you'll go to and you can go and check it out. It's here. It's $197 or it's two payments of 105. Like there can't get any more transparent than that. This is how much it is. And it's actually something that I am redoing this year. So the price is going to go up. So just that disclaimer, it's going to be new probably around summertime is whenever I'll have everything completely finished and updated. If you're already a profit podcasting student, then congratulations, you're getting the upgraded version with for no additional cost. So if you wanted to get in on uh, the course as it is today, then there you go. You can go check it out. But okay. I wanted to talk about something else. Let me know if anybody has any other questions because we have about 13 minutes left and then I'm going to go, we're going to have dinner here in a second because we haven't eaten dinner yet when I'm recording this. Mm. But if anybody has any other questions, then put them in the chat. What I wanted to talk about today, because I told y'all this was going to be a conversation about content strategy, digital business, and just answering any questions that we have. So thank you so much. I want to, let me see. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to have it here. Oh, y'all I'm so far behind. Oh my gosh. So Monique will remember this. Look, there's Rita. It's not taco Tuesday, but Monique will understand. Like I have these little emojis that are so fun. I used to go live every taco Tuesday (laughs) and I thought I had a different one that was already queued up, but I don't, I, I miss going live y'all. I miss playing with all these fun, like little technical things that I haven't had the ability to play with in a while. And I thought I had one that had some Let me see. There's one that says, thank you. Okay. That's great too. Yeah. We're giving this to you, Anthony. So thank you so much for asking your questions and sharing today. Let me know if you have any other ones and we can follow up with those. But, um, yeah, this is, this is so fun. (laughs) Monique says, yes, I miss Rita. I miss Rita. Y'all we had so much fun. We always had so much fun doing this. This is so great. I'm so glad you're here, Monique, because this, this is just, it's great. It's making me smile so, so big. But what I wanted to talk about is B-School. So you may or may not have ever heard of Marie Forleo and B-School, but that's really what I wanted to come here today to talk to you about after we got a lot of the content strategy and content questions out of the way because I'm an affiliate for B-School. I took it in 2019 and I look back at that and I was looking at, let me see if I can pull it up. Now for anybody that's listening on the podcast, you are not going to see this, but I think it's really important that I share what I found because oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I was going through my Google drive. So this is where, you know, I I house everything. I keep everything. And I found some stuff. I found some old stuff from (laughs) the very beginning of my journey. And oh my gosh, y'all, like if you're in the middle of it and you're just like, I just don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm good enough. Like I'm a, we're about to get a behind the scenes, like a full blown behind the scenes of what things looked like before I got started. Okay. 
Okay. We're just, we're about to do a side by side comparison because I mean, it's, it's real. It's we're, we're real in the thick of it. So here we go. I took screenshots of my very first course, the very first profit podcasting, uh, was actually called rookie podcast, <laughs> rookie podcasting back in the day. Now I want to show you, okay. Cause we just, hang on, let me pull up the other one that I just had. So we have, and this is, this is going to be redone. Okay. This is going to be redone. So I want to show you the after first, I should do this opposite. I know, but we've already seen this. So we're here now, right? We have this super cool, like page. It's got cool designs. You know, it, it looks nice, right? It's not the worst sales page you've ever seen. I want to make it better because I'm super critical, but at the end of the day, it's a sales page. It's what it is. And I want you just to take a glance, right? I'm just going to keep scrolling. You can see there's social proof. You can see there's bright, there's videos. It's the price. It has testimonials. Oh, look, it has this cool video in the background. Like it has all these super fun things that I would have never been able to do back in the day. And I want to show you that I learned how to go. I know this is a super long page. <laughs> okay, there we go. We're at the bottom. I want to show you where I started because I am a hoarder. I'm a digital hoarder of taking screenshots, taking pictures of everything that I've done in my journey. And I'm so grateful because I will take a screenshot and I will save something. And people are like, why did you save that? I'm so glad that it did. Because now I'm going to show you my very first, very first sales page. Y'all, this is my very first sales page. Okay. Can you see this? Do you see this? Okay. Profit podcasting, Profit Academy. I know it's in PDF format. It's because I, it's no longer there. This was on Teachable. Do you see this? Do you see this? Very first sales page. Okay. This is a step-by-step -step process. It's not open for enrollment. I don't even know why this looks this way. I mean, what? I don't even know what's happening here. It could just be, um, <laughs> it could just be the formatting. I don't know what it is. Is this a blog post? Like what's happening? Like, I don't, I look back at this and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like I don't, I clearly had no idea what I was doing. I really didn't. And this isn't like a harsh judgment on me back then. The truth is, is I just didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't. I truly did not know what I was doing. I just knew that I wanted to get this product out there and have something to show for my course. So this is all before I ever took B-School and I learned the fundamentals about having a website, creating sales pages, doing email newsletters, like all the things. And I think part of it just isn't showing up. Yeah. Look at this. I don't even, I don't even know what's happening here because some of this is just super weird, but, um, but I mean, you can, I hope, I hope that y'all see this. I hope y'all see this as growth <laughs> because, oh my goodness. Like it's just so it's so wild to me. And I stumbled upon this the other day and there's actually like other, other things that I found, but look at this from this. And I did this myself. I did not hire someone to create this for me. I did not go out. Like I did this sales page myself with a little bit of grit and some elbow grease <laughs> is what we would call it is, uh, just getting in there and saying, you know what, I'm going to learn how to do this. I mean, and you can see, it's still not the best sales page you've ever seen. I'm sure you've seen hundreds and thousands of way fancier stuff. But I can tell you that this is an evolution for me. This is what it looks like for me to get better is continuing to invest in the process of making things happen. And that's why I feel so strongly about B-School. So I'm going to share with you, um, y'all can see this here. So this is the page. If you go to crystalprofit.com forward slash B-School, this is the page here. This is my, one of my mentors, Marie. She's hilarious. She is so fun and she is so dang smart when it comes to marketing. She's been in the online business space for two decades, which if you think about it, you're like two decades. 
who has been in this space for 20 years, who's been around long enough. She's been around long enough. She has been around long enough. She has been hustling. Like I love when she tells her story about being a bartender and having a yellow notepad that she would use to collect people's email addresses. Like that's how her email list started. Now it's totally illegal today, right? Like you can't, you can't do it that way today, but that's how scrappy she was to get started. Like she wanted this thing to work and she wanted it to happen. And so she took a legal pad and started collecting email addresses. You want to talk Anthony about how, how do you get subscribers? How do you do it? You get creative and you start thinking about how can I get my message out there to the right people, get in front of the right people and hit them with my content at just the right moment when I know that it can be helpful and it can serve them in a way that can bring meaning or joy or, you know, comedy, entertainment, education, like whatever your topic is, like how can it serve them in a way that can be really helpful to their life? And so when you go here, you can scroll down and see all the different things like we're talking about B-School, what it is. It's a six week online learning program. So it's a digital course that includes six modules where you'll learn all about laying the foundations for a digital business. You'll learn about how to generate profit and actual revenue and what that looks like. And this was a big mystery to me because I had seen people that were like, oh, you know, six figure bloggers and all these people making all this money. And I'm like, yeah, but how? Like, I get it. Fancy. That's awesome. They're making all this money. But how? How does it actually work? Are they selling their soul to the devil? Like, what, what is happening? <laughs> what is going on where they're actually collecting money? And how is that working? And so um, it's just, it's a huge part of it is understanding email newsletters, websites, like I talked about, we covered, like it's a really big deal in it because if you're a digital entrepreneur, your digital business owner, your website is your storefront or it's the way that it's the doorway into your world. And I think that it's just as important, just like if you had a brick and mortar store and you wanted to make it appealing to your ideal customer, it's the same with having a digital business. You have to invest time or money or both, if you have the means to do that, into having a great place for people to come and engage with you, learn more about you and what you're doing. But I want to talk about some bonuses. Okay. Like, let me know if y'all have heard of B-School. If you know what I'm talking about, tell me in the chat if you've done B-School. I know a good majority of the folks in my community have, they went through B-School several years ago and they continue to go through it every single year. So it is brand new this year. I think the last time she redid it was in 2020. So it's brand new in 2023, meaning the content is new. It is fresh. And as someone that purchased the program in 2019, I get to go through it. It's kind of like with my program. Like if you buy it, you get to continue to reap the benefits years to come because here I'm four years, four years in, and I still get to go through the program. So hi, Activate LA. I see you here. I saw that a second ago. Hope you're doing well as well. Okay. Yeah. And Monique said, I appreciate your transparency so much. Yes, you are welcome. I love telling the story of my journey and being able to share it because I think it's the most important thing that we can do. I mean, Monique, like you said yourself, you've been here for a year and a half doing your podcast. And I bet there's so many stories that you have that would be helpful to members of your audience. So I encourage anybody listening, share your stories. Share, like maybe you even thought you know, something about Marie, whenever I told you she was a bartender and she put this yellow notepad out there, like that's part of her story. Me being a stay at home mom, trying to figure out how to do something for myself and try to figure out how to make money from home. Like that's part of my story. And I think it's really important that we continue to tell our stories. We continue to share those things because that's how we make those deeper connections with people. But okay. So here we are. So what happens is when you enroll in B-School 
and you are, you know, you go through the process of clicking on any of the links on this page, then you will be cookie to me, which means you will have my unique affiliate link that you get to sign up through the program and be part of my MF plus KP bonus bundle. So that stands for Marie Forleo plus Crystal Profit. And that's our bonus bundle that we have every year. And this time we actually have an early bird bonus that is expiring on February 12th at midnight Pacific Standard Time. So if you're listening to this in the future and this is gone, I'm so sorry, then you've, you've missed out on it, but I'm actually offering a one-on-one coaching call with me. So if you like this style of me, like sharing my screen and telling you all about the behind the scenes of what you could do with your content, how you can enhance it, how you can make it better, then I encourage you to check out B-School, see if it's a good fit for you. And um, if it's something that you're interested in doing for your content and helping you create a digital business, then I would love to give you a one-on-one coaching call. I'm excited that we've already had somebody register and I can go ahead and schedule the call with them because this is going to be so much. I love doing these coaching calls. They're so much fun. And I think that I get better as a coach as time goes on because I have more insights and more experience into the different facets of content creation, whether it's building websites, doing podcasts, doing YouTube shorts, doing all the different things that I've kind of played around with over the years. So that is super, super fun. Again, the one-on-one coaching call expires on February 12th at midnight. But then from there, I am giving everyone that joins B-School through my special link, six weeks of accountability. And what that looks like is we have Slack. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Slack and the awesome application that it is. I love Slack so much, but it's basically taking a community to your smartphone or to your desktop because I love Slack that I can do it anywhere and I can DM people or I can give them like a voice memo or we can all celebrate together if someone has a big win or someone is doing something and they just have a question, they're stuck. Like you don't have to be stuck. I think that's the best thing about being a part of B school and the community is I no longer felt stuck anymore. I had a group of people that I could reach out to and say, Hey, I'm thinking about trying this. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it's the right move or I just feel a little stuck. Can someone help me? Has anybody else experienced this? And you just get connected to a network of people that can help you and what you're trying to create. So that is super fun. And then we have three live group coaching calls. So what this looks like is we're going to have three Zoom calls that we'll figure out the dates and the times once we get people in the group. And once we have several people signed up, we'll talk about which days, which times make the most sense for everybody that's there. Um, We have a lot of people that will join that are in the US, but some people will be Eastern, some will be Pacific, some will be uh, Central, some will be international. So we'll have to figure out when uh, the group coaching calls can work for everybody. But those are so fun. Much like what we've done here today, where we have comments here and there about different things. Like we'll be able to talk about whatever you want to talk about for your digital business. If you want to walk through creating a website or getting your social media set up or, you know, figuring out your content. We can talk about all of those things in our group coaching calls as well. But I already talked about profit podcasting earlier, and I'm excited that if you join B-School with me, you also get access to profit podcasting. So like I said earlier, this is getting a makeover in 2023. And so for now, the price of the program is at 197. It is going to be going up in a few months. And so if you get into B school, you join the program, you're going to get the current version of profit podcasting, but you'll also get the updated new and approved or new and improved version. So that's super, super fun. And then this is one of the things that I reserve for very special occasions. And I have signed copies of my book, Start a Binge Worthy Podcast. So if you're in the podcasting space and you're wanting to get started with a show, I love giving this 
just great resource. This is what people have told me. Like, this is such a great resource. And it's something that um, I don't always have signed copies to give out because people buy it on Amazon and, you know, they have the audiobook. But um, I love doing this. So throwing that in there. So once you're on this page, um, crystalprofit.com forward slash B school, you can just go down to um, I want these bonuses or any of the buttons here. And it will take you to the page where you can register for B school. But y'all, that is over $1,500 in added bonuses that you get whenever you register for B school through my unique affiliate link. So again, go to crystalprofit.com forward slash B school to check it out. And then you'll see we have some FAQs here on the price and everything that's here. I know that's uh, a lot of people ask me that and I should have covered this earlier. So the investment when you enroll in B school is $24.99. So $2,499 or 12 payments of $239. And I will have a lot of people say, oh, that is a big investment. That is a lot of money. And I can tell you right now, it is a lot of money. I don't sit here and say, oh, I just swiped my credit card and that was such an easy decision and I just never looked back. No, it was a big decision. I actually, um, you know, my husband and I, we always talk about, you know, big investments and what we're going to do with our money and how we're going to handle it. That's just something we do together as a couple. And it was one of those things where I told him, I said, I want to look at this as Look, like investing in going back to school and going back to college because he has, you know, he went to, he did his master's, he did his bachelor's. I have my bachelor's degree and I've never really loved the idea of going back for my master's. I'm like, that just feels like so much of an investment of time to make that happen. But when this opportunity came, I was like, you know what? I'm going to treat this like it's a college course because it's six weeks which you can watch it. You can watch the replay. Like you can always do things at your own pace at your own time. You could purchase the program now and do it in six months. But I, it was one of those things that I went all in, like making that investment made me step up to the plate in a much bigger way than I think if it would have been something that was like $20. I absolutely would not have showed up the same for a $20 program as I did for something that was $2,000. It was a much bigger investment. And it's something that I made back easily in six months after I took the program. There's probably people that made it back even faster, but to Monique's, you know, <laughs> to her point earlier, I'm full transparency. I'm not going to tell you, you're going to buy the program and you're going to make millions of dollars the next month. Like, nope, that's not what happened for me. So it may not be what happens for you, but it is something that I can tell you, I made the money back on my investment in six months after I joined the program because I took you, like you saw the old version of profit podcasting and what it looked like to the newer version. I learned digital tips and tricks and strategies that I, it would have taken me years to learn it on watching YouTube videos or listening to a podcast. And so having this blueprint of what I could do was just super, super helpful. So that's it. I want you to go check out B school, go to crystalprofit.com forward slash B school and check it out. Uh, the doors just opened today and they're open until February 23rd. I'm saying that with a question mark. Cause I think that that's when, yeah. So February 23rd. So I know it can feel kind of like I dropped a bomb on you, right? Like, Oh, that's a lot of money, Crystal. I was not expecting to come here today and you drop that big of an investment. So go talk to, you know, if you need to talk to someone like I did, like I needed to have a conversation with my husband and say, is this a good idea? Is this a good investment? Am I ready for this? I think that was one of my big things is I was doubting myself. Like, am I really ready to make that kind of investment in myself and in my business and what I was trying to create? And the answer was yes. Like I was absolutely ready because I was stuck. I was stuck in a place of feeling like, I don't know what the next move is. Like I had been podcasting for about a year. Let me see. It was probably because I launched the podcast in Ju June, July of 2018. So it had been not quite a year. It had been about eight to 10 months. And then I was like, you know what? I think I'm ready to take this to the next level. 
And I don't know what that means. I don't know what that looks like. And so having that investment at that point in time was just the thing that I needed to push me out of my comfort zone and make me take the next steps that have gotten to, it's gotten me where I am today. Because after I took B school, I rebranded my podcast. So if you've gone back to the very first episode, that was the rookie life way back in the day, I rebranded my show. I did all these other moves that helped me get to be to the point of where I am today. I'm speaking as an industry expert on podcast movement stage in just a few weeks. I've been invited on other people's shows to share my expertise and get in front of audiences that want to hear about content strategy and creating with confidence. And none of that would have happened had I not said, I'm going to go all in on my business and what I'm creating back in 2019. So that's it. That is what I wanted to share with you today. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash B school to check it out. Anthony says, thank you so much, Crystal. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you all for hanging out here with me today. This was so fun. Special shout out to Monique. It was so good to see you. I'm so glad that you're here. And I really appreciate everyone in this community. And thank you so much. This was, this is so fun. I miss this. I miss this. Like I need to make this happen. I need to set like some schedule on the, you know, set it up on the calendar where I come back and do this more often (laughs) because this is a lot of fun. Like how did an hour in 12 minutes fly by so fast, but it did. And I just want to remind everybody to keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. I hope that you have a fantastic day and I will talk soon. Bye everyone. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.